Gentlemen, welcome. Please find a seat and relax. We have a lot to discuss. And all, I am KC. And I'm DC. And we are two goddamn gentlemen bringing to you this and every week a true guide to becoming a good man and a true gentleman. DC, you can follow this show all over the place. Patreon.com backslash two goddamn gentlemen gets you access into our live Discord server. You can follow us all over social media. Head over to two goddamn gentlemen. Dot com for links to everything you could possibly need. DC, what is everyone in store for this time? Well, not only are they in store for two more gentlemen that we're going to nominate today, but uh, we got a little bit of extra content that we forgot to give last week, which is the Russell Greer court. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it the, the uh, I don't know. Court documents. We'll call it the court the court documents. You mean bonus Casey, content. Not stuff we forgot, but actual bonus content that we are, are adding this week. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you may know, at twogoddamngentlemen.com, you can click on the episodes and you can get the audio. You can get the video once a week has passed. We'll toss the video online for the public to see. Uh, it's only exclusive for uh, those who are sirs or gentlemen until that week has passed. But uh, underneath those, you have the chance to vote whether or not uh, Jeff Wilpon was a gentleman and Russell Greer was a gentleman. The votes are in, and by the slimmest of margins, Russell Greer is the top gentleman followed very – I think it's one vote because you can vote – On a scale of like one to five, it's like that strongly disagree all the way up to strongly agree. So, you know, strongly agree is a five and Russell Greer got straight fives. That dude was (laughs) ridiculous. And uh, I'm excited to get into today's. Uh, I've got myself a strong drink. It's uh, this drink is stiffer than Russell Greer's upper lip. So I can't wait that to get this episode started. That is a stiff drink. That's a stiff drink. Now, Now, Casey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go ahead, go I, ahead. I was just going to say, I don't know how many honorary uh, gentlemen you have tonight, but certainly before I get to my, my main gentleman, I would like to honor a few, a few special people. Of course. I would like to start with a gentlemanly tip of the cap to Kansas City Chiefs fans who booed racial unity last night. You know, <laughs> stick to your guns, Kansas City. That's what, uh, that's what a gentleman does, is always sticks to their guns. That's important. Um I don't know if you caught that last night, DC, but... Uh, I Dude, I didn't catch anything. We were supposed to have a show prep last night. Uh, I fell asleep at, I don't think, 8.30. Call it 8.30. I was putting the boys to bed. I was looking at my phone. I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, the, the first game of the NFL is tonight. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be a good game. We've got arguably the two best uh, fantasy quarterbacks going head-to-head. And I didn't have... I didn't have anybody started... But, ah, fuck sports talk. I fell asleep. I didn't see it. We're not done with sports sports talk. talk to you. We're not done with sports talk. I have two more honorary gentlemen uh, to go through here, DC. I'll leave it to you. Now, speaking of things, I don't know that you caught. Skip Bayless the last two days. Have you heard anything from Skip? Dude, I haven't heard a single thing Skip has said since um, the Miami Golden State or excuse me, the second Miami uh, San Antonio series. What was his hot take there? Did he have one? LeBron sucks. It's oh. always his hot take. That was that was his yeah. current take. Yeah. Kawhi uh, Leonard is the best player that's ever existed. Sure. I think was his take at that point. Hard to argue. Um, so this week, Skip <laughs> Skip hit the news once again, and and here's my big mm-hmm. issue: is whoever the four people are that are watching the show that Skip is on, if they would stop sharing it with us, none of us would know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the tree falling in the woods thing, but one person was there to hear it, and they had to tell everybody else. Um, Right. So Dak Prescott came out this week and talked about how after his mother passed away and his brother committed suicide, uh, toward at the beginning of quarantine, all of the weight of everything plus you know being alone in his house, he was very Mm -hmm. depressed and he fought through those demons and is coming back. Right. 
So I would like to show you how a gentleman qualifies a statement and then kind of just brushes aside any qualifications he may have had. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to disqualify myself. Uh-oh. Right I'm not hearing it. Question. I'm the oh, you're not hearing it? Maybe it's not loud. Is the chat hearing it? Coming. Hit us up in the chat. Are you hearing that? There we go. There we go. As the face of that Thank franchise you, mm -hmm. of America's team. I'm going to ask our audience to feel free to go ahead and condemn me if you choose as cold-blooded and insensitive on this issue. I have deep compassion for clinical depression, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the quarterback of an NFL team, you know this as well as I, better than I do, it's the ultimate leadership position in sports. Am I right about that? Mm -hmm. You are commanding an entire franchise. What's the roster now? Is it 53 you know still? 53, fill? but I think they got <laughs> you know, like 15. You don't understand Jesus how much time Christ. every day they have to fill. <laughs> That's incredible. Anyway. Yeah. Practice I squad, guys. Say, but, but you're commanding a uh, lot of young men uh -huh. and some older men. And they're all looking to you to be their CEO, to be in charge of the football team. Because of all that... I don't have sympathy for him going public with, I got depressed. I suffered depression early in COVID to the point, go work out. Look, he's the quarterback of America's Ugh. team. Ugh. And you know, and I know this sport that you play, it is. He dog goes on for dog. a little while. And then as you can imagine Ugh. in our current, our current age, DC, that's those, you know, those comments, you can't get away with that now. We all know that. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, he came on the air today, uh, and again, didn't watch the show, didn't DVR it, but you, you see these things. Um, and he said, yes, well, I understand pandemic depression. <laughs> but that's, that's all I was saying. So there's a difference now. A gentleman knows the difference between pandemic depression and any other kind. And if you're a quarterback... Skip's an idiot. You are not allowed to be depressed. My favorite story of the week, DC. Uh huh. It, it wasn't enough to be a full gentleman, unfortunately. But uh, if we could go back, do you remember earlier in the summer we heard from one Novak Djokovic? Oh Novak yeah, he was had, definitely anti-COVID. I'm with him. He certainly was, and mm -hmm. uh, he, he spouted off about being anti-COVID. And you can see the article if you're uh, in the Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. He held a tennis tournament earlier this year. Uh, a lot of shirtless pictures went around, uh, and then ev everybody that was at the tennis tournament got COVID. So that isn't ideal, but he had a better moment this week, DC. Mm -hmm. At the U.S. Open, Novak Djokovic was a little upset. <laughs> I did see this. A little I upset. I did see this. This was with, great. This is my favorite thing that's happened in sports in quite a while. A little upset, and oh, no. The way this woman falls down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he hits he hits the ultimate Karen. Like not only did he hit a line judge, but it was the worst person he could have possibly hit for his career. <laughs> yeah, it was he, uh, everyone already knows he's an asshole. He's funny. Like that's the problem. Is that people may watch this show and think, "Ah, oh, these guys are fucking assholes. Why do they call themselves gentlemen? This makes no sense." It's cuz we're funny. You know, it, it kind of, we'll they balance, take it. They balance each other out. Yeah, exactly. So Djokovic nails this lady in the throat, and the best was the still. You, did you see that? Like, it was on every freaking article they wrote about this, was her, like, grabbing her throat, which is, like, bright red, oh, right? Yeah. Probably from her, like, rubbing on it for the last, like, five minutes. But, like, glaring. She's, like, glaring at him, like, I don't forgive you. I will never forgive you for this. I'm sure that broke him up inside. And then, and then the video clip of him talking to the judges, right? That are like trying to explain to him that like, yeah, we're going to have to disqualify you. And he's just laughing. Like, that's the best part about it is that he's just like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? Like serves have gone errant, like into line judges before. Like, yeah, it was a stupid move. Like it, he fucking shot this thing off like there was no reason for him to hit the ball that fast to someone who was supposed to just catch uh <laughs> an extra ball he really launched it at her but still i, I think mean, if he 
told her it was coming, she wouldn't have had a shot. It's still hitting her in the throat. Like, all right, I'm going to hit this. Dude, and if it had hit her anywhere else, if that if he had launched that ball at her and it hit her in, like, the leg or if it hit her in the shoulder or something like that, he's not he's not disqualified. It's because it hit her in the fucking throat. It's the worst place he could have hit her. I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> All right, so those are my honorary gentlemen of the week. I, uh, a gentlemanly tip of the cap to Chiefs fans, Skip Bayless, and Novak Djokovic. Oh, Lord. All right, Casey, I told you in advance that uh, a gentleman of the week had fallen into my lap just yesterday. This this was amazing. So uh, I get home from work, and at 5.24 p.m., I get a random text from a area code I don't know, uh, 857. I didn't even look it up. I didn't care. Because I was so excited. The text read, Hi, I'm Kevin. Volunteering with the Democrats. Is this Daniel? Oh, boy. It's my dad. Oh, boy. I was excited. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I was excited. (laughs) I said, Yes, it is. And KAC, if you will kill some time for me, Mm. my three-year-old son just got out of bed, and I've got to usher him elsewhere. Oh, that's beautiful. This is our first ever kid needs to be put back to bed live break on the podcast. That's very exciting. Well, I don't know where DC is going with his gentleman tonight. I do know where this uh, text thing is going because he was texting me some screenshots last night, but I'll leave that to DC. Um, For mine, I will give you a couple of hints. Um, It is a historical uh, feature tonight for me. We're going to be bouncing back and forth. This is the thing about this podcast uh, that I've been learning in the last two and a half weeks since we started it um finding my lane and finding the true gentleman that i truly appreciate and i found one today that i'm really happy with and i'm i'm fairly concerned that that was all too right fast. i'm kind of thinking dc might have thrown the child back in bed is everything okay that was really quick that was really quick that was that was a plus parenting if i do say so myself i didn't have to i didn't even have to get physical uh so <laughs> he says this is Kevin volunteering with the Democrats. This is Daniel. I said, yes, it is, exclamation mark. I, w- I wanted him to know that he can talk to this guy. <clears throat> it wasn't going to be pleasant for him, but uh, he says, great. We're less than 60 days away from the election. Can we count on your support for Joe Biden and the Democrats? And I said, I'm conflicted about my vote. I wanted this guy to think he was going to do the Lord's work today. He was going to take a fence sitter and push him onto the Joe Biden side, right? I wanted him to have like, yes, this is what I want. This is this is what I've trained my whole life for. And you have to imagine that like the last 25 texts he sent were all fails. And then he's like, oh, I got one, guys. I got one. I got one. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And I've got a, like, I've got a Connecticut area code phone number, even though I'm in Florida where it is a swing, like my vote is important here in this state. It's, it's 50, 50 in Connecticut. My vote means absolutely nothing. It's horse shit. It's going to be Democrat. Why are you even texting people with this area code? But anyway, uh, I said, I'm conflicted about my vote. He said, no problem. What are some of the concerns on your mind? I said, is Joe Biden really okay with trans people? He's totally old, you know? Will I be taken care of after I have the surgery? I wouldn't write back to that. No. I would think, okay, this fucking guy's trolling me, right? <laughs> he writes back, yes, Joe Biden has been a longtime supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. And f- for time's sake, I'm just going to call it ligabita. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have time to ligabita say all that. Plus. And <laughs> ligabita, um... And also, why are you saying LGBTQ plus? Doesn't the Q cover the plus? Isn't that why they have that there? That makes no sense to me, why they would have plus. What's the plus? It's fear. It's because something else will be added later. So <laughs> it's, that's, yeah. that, it's yes. what it is. It's like, well, what if LGBTQ uh, or whatever it is doesn't cover <laughs> what everybody has or what everybody is? So whatever. Plus. So he goes... Joe Biden has long been a supporter of Ligabito rights. He, I believe, he was actually one of the first Democrats to publicly support gay marriage. You can read more about his position here. And then he links a a JoeBiden.com that I did not click. I said, I'm skeptical that his position is legitimate, I guess. 
Like, I thought my husband was gay since we first started sneaking behind the club alleyways, but now, after 12 years, he tells me he's straight. And if I want to stay together with him, I need to transition to a body he's attracted to. Can you believe that? I didn't get these screenshots. And then I said... (laughs) You left me at the beginning. This is beautiful. This is, yeah, this is great. So then I said, is Joe Biden just saying he's gay to get the votes, but then we'll pull the rug out from under us? Trump said he'd build the wall, but where's that? (laughs) Uh, Kevin writes back, as far as I know, Joe Biden has never said that he's gay, but he has been a strong advocate for Lugabita rights. You can look at his history for support for Lugabita rights, including when he was vice president. Why are you concerned that he will stop supporting Lugabita rights once elected? I said, because then he'll have all the power. Right now, he needs to pander and say all the right things. I'm a little concerned about his health. I don't want to vote for that orange circus clown again, Kevin. Against the devil herself, easy choice. Against Joe, I feel a lot better cause about it because I'm really voting for Kamala once Joe passes in a couple years from his onset dementia. <laughs> Kevin writes back. <laughs> I he can't believe back. this guy's still writing back. He wrote back to that. <laughs> he wrote back to that. It gets, back it to gets that better, one. dude. It gets better. It gets worse. Based on what I've seen from Joe Biden, I really don't think he would change his tune on Ligabita rights after being elected just based on his history of advocacy. And I don't think that Joe's mental faculties should be a concern. I think if you watch some of his recent in-person interviews, you'll see that he's very much still got it. <laughs> I write, I guess you're right. His actions on Ligabita speak louder than his old white man demographic. Why are you voting for Joe Biden, though, Kevin? Why would a nice, attractive guy like you waste your time <laughs> waste your time trying to convince a queen like me to vote for Biden when my vote doesn't even count? He writes, well, first off, your vote certainly does count, and I would encourage you to vote for down-ballot candidates as well. Personally, I'm voting for Joe Biden because blah, 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 blah and he goes off on his uh, left-wing bullshit. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I said... My PO said I'm not allowed to vote or have a gun anymore. Did that change? That's great. Do I just go to the post office directly? (laughs) He says, you can find out about rules for voting at this website. And then he he writes, I will vote.com. And I did not click that. And then I, I was like, okay, I have to write something that will make this guy understand that I'm just fucking with him. So I wrote back, I'll probably just write in George Floyd. He's made such a positive cha- a positive change on this country, you know? Why vote between two almost dead guys, am I right? He wrote back to that. No, 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 no. Unfazed, dude. He wrote back to that. He said, I would say that George Floyd certainly brought attention to a serious issue of racial, racial inequality in this country. I'd urge you to take a look at some of Joe's more recent public appearances, and you'll see that he's very much alive and thriving. Smiley face. What a fucking robot that guy is. But he is my honorary gentleman of the week for putting up with my bullshit. And uh, he didn't earn my vote. I'm still writing in George Floyd. Don't get me wrong. That's the second Kevin nominee and I think the best one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. (laughs) Definitely more gentlemanly. Now, Casey, we've gone through our honorary gentleman. Let's not tease the people anymore. Who is your gentleman of the week this week? My gentleman is a gentleman not only of the week, but really of centuries, DC. Damn. My gentleman is Henry VIII. <laughs> All I know about Henry VIII, like specifically and legitimately, is that song, I'm Henry VIII, I am, I am. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know how, I don't know why that song is I don't uh, know that. a thing. What is that from? Do you know? Probably. No, patroness of Latter-day Saints probably knows. Oh, there you go. Uh, All right, so, DC, I didn't Mm. know that much more than you did about Henry VIII. I didn't even know what you knew uh, with the song, but I did know a couple of things, and I learned quite a bit more. Here's the case. (laughs) It's Britpop from the 60s. Okay, thank you, Chad. Oh, it's what is it from? It's Britpop from the 60s. I'm Henry VIII. I am, I am. Sure, why not? It's catchy. Uh, it's all right, catchy. so, DC. Yeah. Aside from being the heir to the English throne, Henry VIII was an attractive catch in his youth. He was six foot two and had sunburnt hair, athletic, sporting, musical, and well read. Those are gentlemanly traits if I've ever heard them. That's a killer start. 
Good start. Now, a gentleman lives his life as he pleases. And that's really the key here. Let's all remember that. Okay? A gentleman lives the life he wants to live. Right? If I wanted to live a life uh, like Henry VIII, I'd need to do better in life. And we'll get into that. As Henry reached middle age, he did put on a large amount of weight. Uh, What's his... middle age for back then? Like 15? <laughs> yeah, like tw- 21. <laughs> yeah. uh, his once 32-inch waist grew to 54 inches. And he weighed nearly Damn. 400 pounds by his death. In his later years, he That's also... That's a gentleman. That's right. That's, That's right. a gentleman. He saw food. He wanted the food. He ate the food. A gentleman lives how he must. He suffered from ulcers in his legs and found standing and walking painful. Rumor had it that when he could no longer mount his horse, a crane was used to hoist him into the saddle. I thought they were going to say he got him an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be easier to get on than the horse? <laughs> the elephant. No. <laughs> the elephant will like help you though like i've seen elephants like get down on their knee and like put their trunk out you can stand on their trunk and like they'll lift you up onto oh, them you know sure yeah but the elephant probably look at yeah. him and be like i don't think so look at this no, guy fuck you buddy <laughs> if you're an elephant you're not lifting that guy up and he's probably only like no. 200 pounds in the if you're an elephant you're thinking like all right what's your what's your number buddy Henry was never expected to rule England. His brother Arthur, the Prince of Wales, was older and next in line for the throne. But DC, as you mentioned, what is old age and middle age in back then? Uh, Arthur was a sickly child, though, and he died of a mysterious sweating sickness at 15. I'm glad we don't have also that. Also known still. as cancer. Oh, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> mysterious sweating sickness. At age 10, Henry became, yeah, Rona. He became the official successor uh. to the English crown. Now... Henry was paranoid about getting sick and dying, and here's my case for why this gentleman would be a good leader today. Henry VIII was paranoid about getting sick and dying and was especially afraid of contracting the plague. Whenever there was an outbreak of any illness, he made a point of isolating himself until it passed, even leaving London for a full year when a severe wave of said uh, sweating sickness uh, came in. Hmm. Prepared for the pandemic hundreds of years in advance now dc what most people know about henry the eighth is why he's a true gentleman his love life he was getting it on he took arthur's first wife his young his little brother died at 15 already had a wife he took arthur's first wife catherine of aragon she was spanish and catholic now she gave him a daughter that's not okay we're not good with Boo. that. Yes. Boo. We want sons here, right? A gentleman needs to a To the son. river. <laughs> so he went to the Pope and was like, hey, Pope, I'll, this, is, this isn't working. I got, we got to get rid of this. And the Pope was like, we don't right. do that shit. There's no, there's no ending marriage. So he was like, all right, cool. Catholicism. <laughs> nope. Church of England. New, new religion. I'm in charge. Anglican church. Annulled. Bam. That... DC is the ultimate gentleman move. If your religion does not abide by your gentlemanly <laughs> code, you start your own fucking religion. And kick that bitch in the I curb. think that's what we're doing right now. That's, that's what we're doing right now. That's exactly right. <laughs> so the Church of England was formed, and he was in charge of it. So he annulled that first marriage. See you later. Get out. He took a new wife, Anne Boleyn, who was super hot, but she refused to sleep with him. Which as, the, yeah, which, as the king, seems, like, problematic. Uh, also, her sister was previously the king's mistress. Uh, let's see. Anne eventually gave him a daughter. Oh, man. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Uh, so, the funny thing was that they didn't know that that was the guy's fault back then. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it was all the woman's well, fault. I mean, technically, if women could even give the, the beauty of a Y chromosome... That would be a different thing. They're they're given they're batting uh, zero X and X both times, but they didn't know that only a man could produce a man. Well, they do now. Now now, now we know, but uh, poor Anne, <laughs> they did not know back then. Uh, so he needed a new wife because she gave him a daughter, right? So she's no mm-hmm. good either. Even she's hot, all good, but no. Yeah, yeah. Need, He'll keep the son. head eventually once they get it off. So as you do, they branded her a witch. Right? Mm -hmm. Locked her up in the Tower of England and cut off her head eventually. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Then he married Jane Seymour. 
Now, Henry loved Jane Seymour, and she gave him a son, and she died of natural causes. The best marriage he ever Boom. had. The best. The best marriage anyone could ever have, I think, right? <laughs> Get married, you like her, she gives you a son, she dies of natural causes. Exit stage left. <laughs> Is there any better marriage possible? <laughs> So, uh, yes, mine. I'm obligated to say mine. Mine is better. Yes. There is. <laughs> so now, now he's single again. He needs a wife. Of course. Now, mm -hmm. by his fourth wife, DC, where do you think we're at in the weight gain? Like, which wife uh, do you think? him or the wives? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with him. And I, what I want to know is, which wife do you think was the first one to join the marriage and be like, oh, man. Like, uh, probably all of them, because he's beheading them, and, and they're dying as they go. But, like, probably by the yeah. second or third one, they're looking at him like, ah, this isn't even, it's not worth it. Yeah, probably this one, because you prefaced it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I don't think anybody had a great time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say he was so into the weight gain that they had to, like, create a contraption to, like, <laughs> Those were, like, the first, sec the first sex swing was for him. Like a bed... Like a bed that declines like this, so his head is down here. It's and then it's he has like a little barrier right here that catches the fat, so that he doesn't suffocate himself. And the penis is exposed. It's a, <laughs> I've said too much. It's a lie down <clears throat> squat rack with a roller coaster handle. <laughs> so keep his fat up. <laughs> the, the bar that they click in on a roller coaster—that's what it is. Have you ever have you ever been on a roller coaster with somebody too fat? To have the bar come down? Uh, yeah, I was. Oh, uh, that's the best. Yeah, no, oh, it was actually the, the worst because it was me when I was like 18. <laughs> Dueling dragons. I was like 320 pounds back then, man. <laughs> and I, carry, I carried it all up here. It wasn't my stomach. <laughs> it was my shoulders and chest. Too big oh, for the fucking over-the-shoulder bars to come down. His dueling tits. He's like, ah, come on. <laughs> you go this way. You go this way. <laughs> I fit on it now. That's all that matters. To choose his, choose his fourth wife, Henry was uh -huh. sent paintings of possible partners, which is Facebook, essentially. Uh, he chose yeah. Anne of Cleves over her sister, Amelia, but was unhappy with his choice when he finally saw her. He called her, quote, a fat Flanders mare, end quote. And he had the marriage annulled just six months later. So she lived. Damn. That's good. Okay. Right? Yeah. Catherine Parr <laughs> came next. She was the fifth wife. And he died. I'm sorry, the sixth wife. And she died before he did. Or he died before she did. So she got lucky. Okay. She got super nice. lucky. Nice. Okay. So she died as queen. Or he died as queen. <laughs> you died as you queen. You get what I'm saying. I got it. You yeah. get what I'm saying. All right, so now let's go through some gentlemanly acts of his lifetime, aside from the marriages. He did live an extravagant lifestyle, and by the time he died, he was massively in debt. When you factor in his 50 palaces, 70 ships, tapestry collection, and 6,500 handguns, it's not hard to understand. I can't blame him for the 6,500 hand, uh, handguns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 6,500 handguns. Yeah. yeah, those were like new technology. <laughs> They're like coming up with stuff like, hey, check this out. This is called the revolver. <laughs> he was he was quoted as saying had to get all the handguns before they elected Biden. That's what he was quoted as saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's correct. <laughs> he was an excessive gambler, as any gentleman is. His favorite game yep. was uh, Primero, uh, which was an early version of poker. But he was reportedly very bad at it. Records show he lost hundreds of pounds per day. And may have gambled away as much as a million pounds in today's money in a three-year span. Dude, who in their right fucking mind would gamble against the king? Apparently a lot of people. Because <laughs> he kept apparently, losing to them. <laughs> and he let them live, I guess. Seems that way. In if this... I was the king, if I lost my money, like, I'd just have that guy killed as soon as he left. And just yeah. Empty his pockets. It's like GTA. Back to the table. Yeah, it's like GTA. If, uh, if like, you have to pay somebody, you just shoot them and then rob them and you get your money back. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Uh, in the 16th century. But they always stiff you. They always stiff you. You pay them and then they only give, they only drop half the money true, that you just actually. paid them. You're like, what? That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. It's the prostitutes. Let's just call it what it is. It's the prostitutes. They never give the money back. That they're supposed to give back. You run them over with the car that you just banged them in. 
get out of the car and you only pick up 13 bucks and you're like, God damn, bitch, $26? That was all it cost? Ugh. <laughs> How'd Ugh. you lose it between eight feet? Uh, in the 16th century, <laughs> it was extremely important for a king to appear powerful. And they did so by hosting outrageous events. In 1520, Henry VIII co-hosted the Field of the Cloth of Gold in Calais or Calais or some place to show a united <laughs> front between England and France. Each king tried to outdo the other in feasting, tournaments, feasting, clothes, jewels, more feasting, and in an exorbitant, expensive celebration that lasted for weeks. That yeah, feasting. Nobody, out, nobody outdid Henry VIII in feasting. <laughs> no, he was the feasting champ. And uh, that describes a perfect gentlemanly activity. A big, extravagant festival. Sure. It's perfect. Yeah. When the Bishop of Rochester, uh, his cook took vengeance on his ungrateful master. So the uh, Bishop of Rochester's cook's mad at the bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, so the cook added a poisonous herb to his dish. They found out about it. So... Henry ordered that the cook be boiled alive in his own pot rather than be hanged, which did become the standard punishment for prisoners for the next five years. Cool. Yep. That's good stuff. That's, <laughs> that sucks so bad. Pretty terrible. While it's impossible. Uh, it's worse. That's yeah. worse if they, like, get the water boiling first and then put you in. Because if it boils slowly, you know what I mean? Like, you get used to it. You're like, ah, you're just, like, chilling. And then all of a sudden, before it's too late, then you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. My skin's boiling. It's that last second, that last second thing. Mm -hmm. Two more things, DC. While it is impossible to tell how many executions Henry ordered, historians believe there could have been as many as 72,000 executions during his reign. It's a lot. Cool. And, and mm -hmm. finally, this was my favorite thing uh, as I lose it. Hold on. Let me get it back. Do, do, do. I'll have to find my last little sentence, but that's okay. We'll leave it there for now, okay. DC. Oh, wait, here we go. I got a it. A gentleman always leaves the audience. Oh, hanging. I got it. It was a rhyme, but it was it was, it was was kind of at the bottom here. If you're trying to remember the order of the brides, it is a rhyme, DC. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. A gentleman always rhymes his marriages. I don't know. But there you go. Henry. Yeah, me too. I, I rhyme my marriages one and done. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, and mine as well. Uh, None is fun. Yes, that's a good rhyme. That's a thank, good rhyme. Thank you. So there you go. My nominee for the week: the true gentleman, Henry. <laughs> uh, now, <clears throat> Casey. Yes, sir. My gentleman of the week is um, following a trend. You could say, your gentleman of the week from episode one was born and raised Mormon in Utah. My gentleman of the week was born and raised Mormon in Utah and then moved to, to Wyoming. And my gentleman of the week this week, as a gentleman always is, was born in Utah and raised Mormon. His name was George Uzunian otherwise known as Maddox. If you don't know who Maddox is, Maddox started a blog type website in 1997, back when the internet was just getting into like the, the AIM, AOL, Hotmail was a new thing back then, those days. Dial up was king and Maddox was a troll pioneer. This guy would get on and write a whole bunch of articles about uh, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And uh, he'd do it in a way that people weren't used to, that, that they are now, where it's just everything is hyperbolic, everything is the worst, everything is the best. Uh, and he wrote with a sense of self-grandeur that came off as super funny because you're just like nobody is nobody's this smart nobody's this strong nobody's this whatever right and he called himself like the the internet pirate basically it's that was his thing right that was the first so, lame that was the first lame piece so far like it all sounded yeah. good till the internet pirate 
Yeah. So <clears throat> he had a thing about pirates. It was real weird. Um, his parents were degenerate gamblers. So like from childhood, like he would have to drive to Nevada from Utah with his parents and they would go and gamble and he would spend time in the, uh, the arcade, like the kids area (laughs) and he would play like kids gambling shit. Makes sense. (laughs) They're terrible people. His dad was, uh, like 50 years old when he was born. And it was like a second marriage. So he's got like a whole bunch of half brothers and sisters and stuff. But basically like the public school system raised him. Like he doesn't have like a lot of connection to his family and all that stuff. So when his website got popular, uh, he wrote a book uh, called The Alphabet of Manliness. And he was like, A is for... uh, arm wrestling, B is for boners, etc. right? And he'd just go through, like, the alphabet of manliness. Okay. Uh, his second book uh, w- is what actually got him all the money because his first book was so popular. It, it got to, like, number two on the New York Times bestseller list back in 2004, I want to say, 2004, 2006, somewhere in that range. Uh, he wrote a second book where he just took – children's art and just shit on it so if you will please pull up uh image number one for me this was the one that i found the funniest <clears throat> it's got a, a child's drawing of a fire engine which you can clearly tell is a fire engine it's pretty good actually for a an eight-year-old which is this kid's age john uh, eight years old pretty good pretty detailed you know you can tell exactly what it is maddox says Ding, ding, here comes the shit mobile. I've never seen a fire truck that needed to be shaved. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather be burned to death than be saved by this hairy piece of shit F. And that's basically the book, right? So he he grades children's art. It's very funny. And uh, he gets, I think, like $200,000 or something for this book deal. And um, a buy-in for another one or two books. So he takes this money and he moves to LA, which all, uh, fucking West of the Mississippi, Mississippi, uh, prima donnas are, uh, want to do, want to do. So, um, he (laughs) moves to, moves to LA and joins an improv group, an improv comedy group, like the most douchey thing you could do and meets, uh, another uh, prima donna, Dick Masterson, who wrote the book "Men Are Better Than Women." Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Excellent piece of satire. The book got him uh, famous enough to go on the Dr. Phil show for one of their like week long, like every every day of the week. The episode is about these people who are misogynists or have some sort of gender bias and Mm -hmm. and his was against women brilliant i i i recommend looking it up the two of them get together and uh start a podcast called the biggest problem in the universe this podcast uh features the two of them bringing in what they consider to be the biggest problem in the universe and they argue it why, why it's the biggest, and then uh, people will vote on it, right? Uh, Dick Masterson started owning this podcast because he would always shit on Maddox for his, his autism that would, like, start coming out on these, like, just stupid, stupid takes on things. I don't really think he has autism. He might. He might have some sort of Asperger's or something like that. But uh, it, it became really clear to Maddox's fans on this podcast that his writing style with the blog was not satirical. Like he actually believed that he was smarter than everybody, that uh, all these things actually sucked and not in an ironic way. And so he started getting called out for some stupid shit that he would say all the time on the podcast. If you'll play clip number one, this is an example of Maddox saying some stupid shit and outing himself. Uh, I, I, titled this uh, a gentleman never kisses and tells it's weird um I, this friend of mine was telling me about 
her friend who got herpes. Yeah. This is Dick Masterson. And this is an example of someone who's trashy. The girl said, well, you know, it's not like her life is over. Well. I'm like, uh, yeah, it kind of is. Like, no one is going to want to have sex with you with herpes. Nah, well, that's not true. I, I just read an article about this. You can't um, dance around that. Like no. those Valtrex commercials when it's like, it's only bad for five days a month. No, it's bad all month. Is it? I, I mean. I, what would you, would you, do, would you bang someone with herpes? Oh, there's, that's a loaded question. I mean, it would, it would have to be, A, she'd have to be the one, essentially. She'd have to be a perfect, uh, you know, the perfect girlfriend for me. Or what? Oh, <laughs> wait, that's not good. That's not good. So essentially, it turns out his girlfriend may have had herpes <clears throat> at the time. Uh, KC, a gentleman always sticks up for the weak and their abusers. If you'll play clip number two for me, where Maddox defends pedophiles. <laughs> Help. Um, so this is something I keep finding over and over in the literature that I read. Pedophilia is considered a psychiatric disorder, not a moral failure. I was talking to a friend a while back who I said, I asked him, I, I said, you know, obviously nobody is in favor of pedophilia, right? Uh -huh. But I said, should, should we, should we demonize these people to the extent that we are? Yes. yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we're what being kind of too hard on pedophiles. That? I really do. What kind of a question is that? <laughs> Good God. Yes, we should be. Holy shit. So Holy the podcast shit. goes on, and uh, as it goes, Dick continues owning Maddox, and he just gets more and more frustrated, and Dick um, <clears throat> has a lot of um, libertarian theories and and tendencies and stuff like that he's very anti-military uh militant police uh militarized police rather um <clears throat> and so maddox kind of morphs and starts like becoming really sjw like really really sjw right and uh if you'll play if you, clip number three that's what happens by the way with unfunny people that think they're funny over time is they just get more and more moral that's all it is. Yes. They have to like, they have to be like, no, you stop making fun of me because you're immoral. And so yeah. Maddox, Maddox has this take, um, <laughs> that I just, I can't get behind. It's, it's absolutely antithetical to everything I believe. And he did this. He, he made a video, a YouTube video because Maddox, you know, he's his own thing. Like he's, he had this blog. He has a YouTube channel that's only his stuff outside of uh, the biggest problem in the universe. So they were going, you know, simultaneously. And Maddox, towards the end of the podcast, made a video where he had this ice cold take. There's been an interesting phenomenon on the internet over the last couple of years. It's the emergence of the word cuck as an insult. The only problem is... Nobody really seems to know what it means. It comes from the French word cuckoo, which is a bird known for leaving eggs in another bird's nest. Today, it's used as a term to describe a man or woman who enjoys watching their significant other having sex with another person. Yeah, that's it. It's a way of shaming people who have a specific fetish, kind of like swingers or people who enjoy orgies, except for no. some reason, it's inherently shameful. If it's you watching two other people have sex, that's just called watching porn. Except people who watch porn aren't called cucks. Okay, hold on. There's more. I know. I see there's uh, still the yeah, yeah. half of it. Please, this. please pause. Yeah, please uh, pause. Where uh, you feel fit. Okay. So that went like knowledgeable, 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 terrible take. <laughs> he wasted no time. He was like, learn, 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 learn. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, swingers and orgy goers are both involved in the act. That's that's a key difference. Just watching from the shadows while your significant other gets plowed. I mean, I would assume that swinging it happens kind of separately, right? I mean, like I don't know a lot about swinging no, at I think, all. I'm I not involved like in a, it. I think it's like a trade swinging. I think yeah. it's like like you, you come out. to my place, my wife goes to your place. Like you no, don't do I, it in the same room, right? Or any of the stories I would ever hear, because, like, uh, all the fucking, uh -huh. like, the Bob Kelly, Patrice O'Neill, all those guys on Opie and Anthony back in the day would talk about that shit all the time. And oh, it okay. always seemed like same room or same house. 
At least that's the way I understood it. Or like at a party. Like different bedrooms. Or okay, something. so it would be like more like an orgy situation. Yeah, yeah. But still, they're involved, mm-hmm. right? Oh, the, yeah, there's so, still a massive difference between that and what Maddox is <clears throat> describing here. Massive difference. All right, continue. You only seem to be a cuck if the person you're watching have sex is someone you're also in a relationship with. So the only crucial difference is that you are in love with the person you're watching have sex. Not necessarily. Not many people know yeah, what the word not, cuck means. A, it's not true. And B, I, like, I understand that there's different fetishes and stuff. But if your little kink in life is that you like watching the person that you love get fucked by somebody else, your kink stinks and you're fucked up. Yes, and you should be made fun of mm-hmm. for your fetish. Yeah. Just like people who like, like, getting all up in, like, stinky feet at the end of the day or something like that. That's fucking weird man and you deserve to get made fun of for that even though it is a fetish so you can't say like oh all fetishes are equally uh acceptable and fine it's not true it's not true no. and this this guy's an idiot certainly not. all right continue to the end <laughs> because they don't spend every minute of their lives combing over the incredibly dense and specialized list of fetishes on porn websites and yes being a cuckold is a fetish it's no worse than most fetishes that get people off and in fact, it's actually pretty tame. It's the most tame. You're not doing anything, of course. <laughs> and I loved how you paused it there. He said, there's nothing inherently wrong with being a cuck. Everything is inherently wrong with being a cuck. You're being, dema- you're being em- uh, emasculated. That, dehumanized, sure, whatever term you want. There's nothing really yeah. inherently wrong with being a cuckold because the key word is that the person who's being cuckolded enjoys watching other people have sex. It's no big deal when we watch people in porn, so I don't see why anyone gives a shit if you enjoy watching your partner have sex. You probably don't know anyone who's a cuckold. I do. Maddox. (laughs) It's certainly... He is defending it too feverishly. And uh, Dick Masterson picked up on this, and he brought it in to the biggest problem on the very last episode of that podcast and said, please tell me you didn't say this online you said you said this online and brought in the nothing inherently wrong with being a cuck and just tore him apart for it all of a sudden the podcast is over That's dick and maddox been. split ways maddox uh tells everybody uh you know uh, the podcast has reached an end he just br- he glosses over the fact that the last episode of the show is like a clip show and that Dick is not there, and it's just him and the audio engineer, and uh, <laughs> it was like a thirty-minute show, and and it was just over. Dick makes his own podcast and says, like, "Oh yeah, you know the the podcast ended. You know it was great, uh, but there were artistic artistic differences," is what Dick said. Maddox said, "No, Dick's a piece of shit. He's a rape apologist." And then pointed to some bullshit on uh, 8chan that was probably made by Maddox saying that, yeah, Dick is a rape apologist for some reason. Uh, Fans of the show, fans of The Biggest Problem of the Universe went nuts and said, wait, hold on a second. Didn't you say this in your book? If you'll pull up images uh, two and three, Casey, these are the letter C in the alphabet of manliness. C is for what? Uh, copping a feel. And copping a feel. Either she's got too small an ass, he's got too big a hand, or that's a child. Now, it could be you could cop a feel with your significant other. Do it all the time. Do it all the time. It's great. Cop a feel wherever you you pass through the kitchen, honk. You know, it's great. We'll smack. We'll smack. Uh, image number three, Casey, if you'll pull that up for me. Oh, no. This gentleman, number one is uh, at some kind of party, some kind of show, reaches through gentleman number two and grabs lady number three by the boob, and then it's accentuated in the right panel. And this is Maddox's book. That's Maddox's book. Advocating for copying a feel is part of manliness. Mike B says longest arm ever. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, worst boob job ever look at where her nipples are going in the first image that's like just yeah i also she needs a man correct exactly right should not be looking like that anyway 
So fans called him out. They're like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. What are you talking about? You, you advocate for rape in your book. And you want to say that he's a rape advocate or a rape apologist because of some bullshit thing that he didn't even write online? What's wrong with you? So mm -hmm. there's a huge divide, right? Huge divide. <clears throat> and Maddox's podcast uh, starts losing a whole bunch of listeners. He starts adding uh, uh, advertisers and sponsors that are stiffing customers and like taking orders for things and not fulfilling and then they're just disappearing so it's just like a whole bunch of shady shit and mm -hmm. dick doesn't say anything about it at the time but maddox uses the feed the rss feed for the podcast from the biggest problem in the universe and just piggybacks it with his new show so all these listeners and all these subscribers that they built together are now forced to listen to Maddox's new podcast while while Dick is building up from ground zero, right? Jesus Christ. Um, so well, at the time I'm this sure happens... The fans, I'm sure that's what all the fans wanted, was for Dick to leave they, the channel. <laughs> they were outraged. <laughs> they were outraged. So <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, and also another reason why the, uh, the podcast broke up. I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh... Dick and Maddox have a lot of mutual friends in LA and some of them, uh, a couple of them got married and invited Dick Maddox and Maddox's ex-girlfriend to the wedding. Dick took this opportunity <laughs> to take Maddox's ex-girlfriend home with him and Maddox lost his fucking mind, lost his fucking mind because to him, this was the girl that got away, right? It, it was the love of his life. He wrote a super embarrassing get back with me letter on legal pad, by the way, that he tore and ripped. Like, you know how you try to tear a page off a legal pad? Good luck, buddy. You're going to get a, a corner of that top ripped the wrong way. What do you do? It's the love of your life. You write, an, you write it over again. Nope. He just gives it to her, ripped to shit on the top <laughs> uh oh, dick no. goes home with her they continue dating behind maddox's back when maddox freaks out he's like no no no, dude nothing happened I, of course i would never do that and they end up doing like a quarter of the remainder of the podcast without maddox knowing that he's been dating his ex the entire time says he finds out about it <clears throat> at the last episode and then stops the podcast because of that. He's like, I can, I can't do this with you, blah, 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 blah. So fast forward to September 11th, 2020 today, Dick is still dating Maddox's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> which And we'll which get into what Maddox is up to. Yeah, and, and by the way, I knew it wasn't going to go well long term for Maddox with the girlfriend thing when you were telling what the legal pad paper looked like. Like, oh, she's well, she didn't get it and take him back because we wouldn't know that. <laughs> we wouldn't know what I the don't legal think, pad looked like. I don't think she even opened it. I think she kept it in her coat pocket, and Dick was somehow like going through wardrobes or something like that, and he fucking found it. And he's like, what is this? He's like, oh my God, it was gold. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, he calls Dick a rape apologist. He gets wrecked for his own book, right? Then Maddox continues along this SJW nonsense. Uh, if you'll pull up uh, Maddox's YouTube video number one that I've given you. Here we go. This is what Maddox considers to be hot content. A few weeks ago, my apartment was invaded by crickets. And now you get to At see first, what Maddox looks like. Annoying. His face matches but the voice. slowly, over time, the crickets started to wear at my sanity. I couldn't focus on anything but the chirping. I spent That's hours Maddox. looking for it because crickets usually chirp at night. But if it was hiding someplace dark, it would usually chirp all day long. I even made the following pledge during a live broadcast. If I catch this cricket, here's my promise to you. I will fry it and eat it. So I did some research to find out what the natural predators of crickets were, which were frogs and bats. Then I found some sound effects. This is where I think he actually is autistic. To try to scare the crickets off. <laughs> then
that didn't work. I even went so no far shit. as to go to Amazon and order a cricket protein bar made out of cricket flour. Yo, so we've done some dumb videos in the past. You know, mm -hmm. like we've done stuff and been like, ah, that wasn't really good. Let's just not do anything with that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think he had that thought once during any of this? Like, boy, this video is nothing. This video is absolutely <clears throat> fucking nothing. It's pointless. Ab absolute garbage. And he has, like, somewhere uh, around the time this video was produced, he had somewhere like 300,000 subscribers. Jesus Christ. And, yes, and the video probably got, like, 30,000 views of that. You know, so no one's watching this shit, but still. Cricket that was tormenting Except me. Us. <laughs> At least I'd kill some crickets somewhere, and that made me feel better inside. Finally, one night mm. while I was on the verge of losing it, I saw the cricket scurrying across my floor. I quickly grabbed a mason jar and scurrying the across it. the floor. It's this just standing catch still. Him with this jar. If you... I catch him, I'm gonna try to eat him. Oh, oh, that's the guy. Look at that piece of shit. Oh, you're fucked. For the audio listeners, he's looking in a mirror. Motherfucker, that's right. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy. Fuck you, Cricket. Oh, man, I'm going to eat the shit out of that guy. So like a gracious victor, after I caught the and Cricket... And he always wears a crown. I actually... Non-ironically. Is that a Burger King crown? Uh, no, that's... Uh, it looks like it, but no. It's actually uh, probably a foam crown that's been plated with uh, metallic spray paint. And he's wearing a, a shirt that is his own shirt. He sells it at his store cool as shit and the cool and shit are both like iced over it's very very funny don't you think <laughs> they had a change of heart and let it go i'm <laughs> just kidding i'm cooking it right now <laughs> oh boy he's cooking a carrot he's cooking a cricket with like seven olive oil carrot slices and just a touch of cayenne pepper and don't forget the garnish there it is. A feast for a king. God. I hate this guy. Yeah. Dude, I hate him. Mm-hmm. I'll keep going. So long, bitch. <laughs> it's not going to taste anything. Mm -mm -mm. And what the fuck are the ah. magnets on his fridge? Ugh. God, this video oh. is so fucking that stupid. That is some good revenge. But oh, wait a minute. Did you notice anything? Did he just do a fucking record scratch mm -hmm. sound effect in mm -hmm. his video? Because what fucking just century? Wait. Is this Henry VIII's video? <laughs> How old is this? <laughs> he did. His sound effects are awful. Like on his podcast, he'll have like um, a studio audience clap when he says something that he thinks is worthy of clapping. This is brutal. <clears throat> yeah. Strange about that clip. Anything missing from the cricket? I wouldn't know. Where is its head? Oh, that's right. I cut it off and put it on a stake in my front lawn as a warning to all other crickets. <laughs> in fact, since I caught my cricket, I caught three more of its family members and all of them shared the same fate. He caught you three like more pest, of its like family rest. members. This dude is that's infested right. I count with crickets. Bitch. That's it for now. Tell and he put their heads on toothpicks and stuck them in his shitty grass that has it's dirt because, patches in it. It's because he's always trying to be funny, and he never is. So crickets just keep having to move in to do the sound effect for him. He doesn't have the cricket sound effect. So it's Correct. like, get it? And then, chirp, chirp. Yeah. It's garbage. <clears throat> he's, uh, he's garbage. Right, yeah, he's, he's an idiot. <clears throat> oh, there you go. That's it, right? So there you go. Boy, that's not good. Uh, <clears throat> not only was he filming himself doing stupid shit, but he uh, he brags about writing stupid shit for other people that were posted to YouTube. Go ahead and play number two, if you would. would this is called to. Hillary Meme Queen 2016. Well, there's no way this could be bad, right? This was August. This was August of 2016 before the election. Just kidding, it's me, Hillary. As a mother, prepare to hate I your life for the next it minute. Is for young people to deal with student death. So I'm going to lower college costs so much that you'll say, "Damn, Hillary! Damn, Hillary! Damn, Hillary!" Back. All right, before we keep going. 
What is his involvement <laughs> with this again? He wrote it. All the oh, jokes. No. He helped write them. Oh, no. Damn, Hillary. Damn, Hillary. Damn, Hillary. Back at it again. Correct. There are no jokes form. yet. You're right, chat. Donald Trump thinks building a wall will make America great again. But that's none of my business. And she my sips tea. My business is a Get foreign it? policy <laughs> so good, you'll want a Harlem Shake. <clears throat> oh, that's not the Harlem Shake at all. People it's are the Gangnam movie. style. What's yeah. the best method of gun control? I say no scoping some weak-ass noobs across the map. What's this one's for you, Casey. Ratio? He hasn't even shared his gamer tag. Day of the King. I've got the dankest memes. Made me y'all. Emoji. No cat will be grumpy with a sound economy. Hover war. Text messaging. Go. I'll dab for that. Yeah, I'd be. So what? Pokemon, go to the poll. Yep. Oh, I'm this sorry. is uh, seizure-inducing. Dang. Level of uh, Don't let your terrible. Be <laughs> yeah, chat. Everyone, start taking Molly right now, because that's what that's what you'd have to be on to think that that video was oh. worth uh, one second of your time. It was terrible, ultimate, and he got on Twitter ultimate. all proud of that. Horrendous douche chills, douche douche yeah. chilleries. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So, uh, as he continues to lose his mind, uh, Dick continues to exploit all of uh, all of this um, cuckery, right? Because he's he's with Maddox's ex girlfriend. He finds the letter, and Dick has um, uh, has one of his followers read the letter as Maddox at one of his live shows. Perfect. So he gets up on a microphone. And there's like a violin playing behind. It's like this, like, uh, you're the person that makes me smile. I, I miss you every day. Just sappy bullshit that we've all written. Let's, let's be honest. So Maddox, after all this, he's had enough, right? He's been called a cuck enough. In fact, <laughs> one of Dick's uh, repeat guests, whose name is Asterios Kokonos, super, super Greek, uh, writes... Um, writes like four or five songs, uh, Christmas style songs, all about how Maddox is a cuck. And the album is called Cucksmas Carols. And it sold so well because of how popular Dick's show had become that it got ranked on the Billboard comedy charts. Dude, imagine an album about you being a cuck. <laughs> Makes and the and album, the album was, and the album was shitty too. Like the guy wrote it in 24 hours, and there's the song lyrics are like "cuck cuck 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 cuck." Maddox is a cuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally the song. You're not missing out on anything. Uh, the after the the yeah, I'd I'd pay money for that too. Chat, you're right. Uh, after it charted on the Billboard comedy uh, album charts. Uh, he was, uh, Asterios was contacted uh, for like verification of his information because the Library of Congress needed to record it in history forever as a Billboard charting album that will Holy probably shit. be, that will probably be on the next gold album of uh, historical records that they put on the next Voyager five or whatever they're on, then shoots out into the uh, the aliens. Uh, this this was the 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 last straw, okay, for Maddox. Maddox had had fucking enough, <laughs> and he decides to sue Dick Masterson, Dick Masterson's company, because Dick has a real job. I mean, he's he's a software. Uh, and tech developer for um, uh, an SEO company out in LA. Uh, sues his partners, sues his company, sues Patreon, sues the customer service rep at Patreon uh, for not taking him seriously when he <laughs> told him to take down Dick's Patreon for a hate speech, sues Asterios, 
sues Asterios's company, who happens to be, um, it was, um, oh, fuck, I can't remember. It was a marketing company in New York, one of the top five marketing companies in the world. Like, it, it was huge. No chance that this wasn't going to get BTFO'd, right? Uh, sues them. Sues uh, a satirical character, which we'll get to, called Mad Cucks, because you got Maddox. And a satirical character called Mad Cucks, who pretends to be Maddox and makes fun of him on the dick show, sues him. And I don't think I... Oh, and sues the lawyer for uh, Asterios' company because he was negligent as well. To the tune of $300 million. Seems fair. In, In New York. Sues them in New York when... All but Asterios and his company are California properties. So his lawsuit gets thrown out on every single person except for Asterios and his company who uh, eventually get their case dismissed, but they didn't get it dismissed with prejudice, right? So everyone in everyone in LA gets it dismissed with prejudice for uh, wrong jurisdiction. Like, th- th- this is California. What the fuck are you doing? Gets it thrown out. Maddox hires uh, a dog bite lawyer in New York to bring this suit. And <laughs> Nick Riccata, who was featured on last episode for Nick, uh, for uh, Russell Greer, who who brought the, the joy of Russell Greer to my life, he also covered the lawsuit between Dick Masterson and Maddox and just shits all over this lawsuit. He reads the, the grievances. He reads the, the causes of action and why they're all bullshit. And he's like, who is this fucking lawyer of his? Cause at first he gives him the benefit of the doubt that the lawyer just took this um, complaint that Maddox wrote himself. Cause the grammar is fucking shit awful. Like he has, commas in there like he's trying to hide coke from the fbi like he's just like stuffing stuffing commas in where they don't belong and he's like uh this lawyer really should have looked this thing over then the further he gets through the case realizes that this lawyer is just as incompetent as maddox and not only that but this lawyer has uh like two or three duis got (laughs) got a breathalyzer uh, device in his car so he could start the car only if he breathed uh, breathed clean right uh <laughs> yeah, you don't want one of those in your car you don't want to reach that has point. has a history of suing his clients for non-payment because he's just hustling idiots basically like he's just hustling idiots for lawsuits that they have no business uh getting into and uh, then leaves the client after the case gets dismissed. He's like, yeah, no, nah, I, I can't represent this person anymore. We've got like difference of opinion, all this kind of stuff. And then he sues them for non-payment. So this lawyer's a piece of work. Maddox is a piece of work. The case gets thrown out. Asterios ends up losing his job and having to move in with his parents in, uh, I don't remember where it doesn't matter. Uh, but he's the only one that gets hurt by this thing, right? And uh, <laughs> afterwards, everyone is everyone is shitting on Maddox for how low in life he's gotten. And if you'll pull up image number four, this illustrates how low Maddox has gotten. The character on the left is Mad Cucks, and that's his Patreon. He's got 104 patrons for $257 a month. Imitating this jackass on the right, who actually produces content uh, unironically and has 66 patrons, two six two fifty. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be where Maddox is right now, but not if there's another uh, two stupid goddamn gentlemen that's making more money than us, making fun of us and two how stupid we are. Com. <laughs> yeah, two goddamn cucks dot com making a dollar more a month that's the funniest part a dollar more a month and the the so, Mad cucks picture is just, uh spot on too it's great yeah so we get back to the stolen podcast feed okay <clears throat> yep 
Maddox has stolen the feed. He's done uh, like two years worth of podcasts weekly uh, for the best debate in the universe, right? The whole in the universe thing is Maddox's tag. You might have noticed that in the video if you're if you're watching live or for those of you who are getting the video as uh, a week later or whatever. Uh, everything is best or biggest whatever in the universe. So his new uh, podcast is called The Best Debate in the Universe, which started out as him debating himself, where he would take one side of the debate and then halfway through the show, he would start debating the other side. And the whole point of the podcast was for the listeners to vote on which one he actually believed. That was his fucking podcast. (laughs) I'm trying to think of a way to make it worse. Uh, Good luck. So I can't, no, I can't think (laughs) of a way to make a podcast idea worse than he, he argued both sides. (laughs) And yeah. I, I, they couldn't have even been that interesting either. Mm-mm. Like the arguments themselves. So Dick Masterson was doing some research for the lawsuit. He needed to pull up the old iTunes feed and and get, you know, how many listeners. And, and so he could prove that the damages were not what Maddox was saying they were going to be. And he, he accidentally logged in under his old uh, Apple Store ID, which was the current best debate in the universe <laughs> feed. And what did he do with it? He recorded a little bit of an intro to Maddox's podcast and played it in front of Maddox's podcast episode to all of his subscribers if you will for me play clip four please (laughs) hey everybody this is dick masterson you are listening to an episode of the best debate in the universe the biggest debate in the universe whatever the fuck this show is called i don't know why you're listening to this shit but you are listening to it there is nothing wrong with your audio player i just wanted to talk to you for a quick second before i return you back to your show uh if hey if you missed me and if you ever wonder what happened to the biggest problem in the universe, head on over to thedickshow.com or patreon.com slash thedickshow, and I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you about how Maddox threw a gigantic tantrum over an ex-girlfriend and ended what is one of the greatest podcasts the world has ever seen. Uh, I'll tell you about how Maddox's girlfriend, Metal Jess, now has a restraining order against her for calling that girl, that ex-girlfriend's work and trying to get her fired, lying to get her fired, sobbing about it in court. I'll tell you about the $20 million <laughs> lawsuit that Maddox filed against me, Asterios, Patreon, everybody's place of business to try and get us fired that he just lost in court because he's an incompetent <laughs> fuck who can sell books as well as he files lawsuits. You can hear the breakup letter that Maddox wrote to his ex like a jilted, like a whining baby bitch jilted lover. We read that. Uh, you can hear about you can hear about the video Maddox made calling me a rape apologist. The original troll on the Internet, Maddox, sues people for making fun of him. <laughs> Hear all about it on thedickshow.com, patreon.com slash thedickshow. Oh, yeah, you can also hear about the feed Maddox stole from the original show and redirected to his new show, which is why I can do this, Maddox, you stupid motherfucker. You incompetent (laughs) motherfucker. You steal a feed and you don't change the ownership. You dumb, dumb, bald fuck. You fucking idiot. Go back to Utah. Go back to Utah or go even (laughs) further than that, man. You do not belong on this world, you sue happy sack of shit. Come on over to thedickshow.com. We'll talk about it. I'm there. Sean's there. Asterios is there. Asterios, who is now fired because Maddox pretended to be a woman online, pretended to be a female journalist, and emailed Asterios' bosses saying that Asterios is an alt-right. Like, such a fucking crybaby. Now, fuck you, Maddox. Fuck you. Get raped. I now return you to your <laughs> your podcast, which you should unsubscribe from. This is this show is dog shit. <laughs> epic. Dude, epic. Fantastic. It's fantastic. Now you may have caught that little bit where he said that uh he got Asterios fired for 
uh, pretending to be a woman or by pretending to be a woman mm -hmm. and emailing all his bosses. Maddox wasn't done pretending to be a woman, it turns out. Uh, as recently as last week, Maddox is on Twitch doing this. Go ahead and play clip number five. This is my first ever Twitch stream, so bear with me if I get anything wrong. I like the oh, pause it, pause it real quick. Like, Thank you very much. It's my little choker. So let me preface this a little bit. Maddox's new thing is no longer a podcast. He tried. He he ended the best debate in the universe uh, maybe a year or more ago. Like that that podcast is done. He's He's given up, waved the white flag on that one. He started a podcast with this crazy psychotic chick, Haley Mancini, another uh, uh, improv comic wannabe in L.A. called uh, Godzilla vs. Podcast Zero, where they take a, a Godzilla movie every week and break it down. Because that's cool and funny. Somehow, I don't get it. Like, I don't get what. <laughs> I don't get. I it. don't know. They've done. They've done maybe twenty, thirty episodes of it, and they've been there? on hiatus. What's that? How many Godzilla movies are there? Too many. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't know there was <laughs> that many. Too many, man. Too many, dude. And uh, like since Corona hit, they are not doing it in the same studio anymore because they're L.A. cucks and they don't want to like coof on each other you know so they're like oh well let's uh let's do it remotely like you from your house me from my house we pull it off better than they do they don't even have a f they don't have any sort of semblance of video feed at all we're doing it live for a you know a measly audience but you know they're great it'll grow, <laughs> they're great maybe. they're here who knows we love it it'll grow they'll tell their they'll tell their friends eventually they'll tell their friends and it'll grow it's episode three what do you want so uh <laughs> they They've been on hiatus for like a month and a half. They haven't done any episode. They used to do it like every week. Then it turned into every other week. That podcast is fucking dead. Now Maddox is on Twitch doing weird fucking characters where he takes like uh, Instagram or uh, Snapchat filters and he turns himself into these like weird characters. It started with him being a cowboy. So it like it squared off his jaw. It gave him a hat to cover his bald fucking head. And by the way, he's starting to get like a Mikhail Gorbachev uh, like mark on his head, like a Ooh. probably a skin cancer mark that's just like growing and growing and growing. It's just fucking weird. Yeah, he he's losing like all his hair. He looks like a, he looks like if a hard boiled egg got cancer. Like that's basically what <laughs> Maddox looks like now. He looks like he and looks like Ari Shafir's homeless cousin with AIDS. Sure. Yep. Like. Exactly. And now he's on Twitch. Um, so he's like this cowboy and he does like this weird accent that he like goes in and out of because he's a fucking terrible, uh, stage presence. Right. So, uh, he went from that. Now he, he's like a banana and he calls himself banana dot, a banana docs instead of Maddox. And he's like, he's like this, Oh, oh well, I'm a, I'm a banana. Oh yeah, I like I like being here with everybody. Like it's this it's fucking weird. It's weird as shit. And now his new character is Maddie Locks. And it's a woman. Jesus fuck. And uh this this clip, if you play it from the beginning, this clip is uh Maddox on Twitch with his new character Maddie Locks and uh, all the things that he's into, which is horrifying. Go ahead. This is my first ever Twitch stream, so bear with me if I get anything wrong. I like the cat bell necklace thing. Thank you very much. It's my little choker. I like to wear it to signal to everyone that I'm into anal. Uh, you know, it's, it's a thing. Let's see, 12 ways to unplug when you're sick of screen time but can't quit it. Hmm. How it feels inside infrared sauna blanket. Hmm. Detox hacks on a scale of 30 seconds. What does that mean? An instant saffron latte. Ooh, I love saffron and I love lattes. Yeah, Ed Banger, I'm into anal. It's not embarrassing anymore. Everyone does it. Grow up. What do you think? Yeah, that was on the Dick Show. What? Dude, what? <laughs> what did I just? It's listen awful. To? Like, what uh, happened? What happened there? 
it's Maddox doing very little to his voice. I mean, he puts on a little bit of an affect to become uh, womanly, but basically it's just Maddox just, just being his true self. I think I think within a year, Casey, as soon as Two Goddamn Gentlemen celebrates its uh, 52nd episode, because we sure as fuck are going to do an episode every week, we're going to be announcing Maddox's uh, full transition <laughs> to Maddie Locks. That's correct. And uh, I don't know. Either that or he'll kill himself. One or the other. No, we can't, I have no we idea. Re- Except you kind of have to have balls to kill yourself. You know? I, I think he's kind of a pussy to do that. It I seems, personally. It seems personally. Way, yeah. yeah. It does seem that way. Personally, uh when I get to be old enough, and I don't know how old that's going to be, but when I get to be old enough and I decide that I'm, I'm old enough, it's probably I'm probably going to go out on my terms. I don't know how it's going to be, but uh, I'm not going to die like in hospice. Like that's that's the worst thing I can possibly imagine, except for the morphine. Like that aspect of it is kind of awesome. Didn't we just talk about getting boiled alive in your own pot? Yeah, I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go that way. Maybe if I got like a, a handful of morphine. And I was just like, oh, that's there some go. good morphine. And then I just get in the pot, then that's fine. But uh, yeah, I'm, I, always tell, I always tell my wife, and we don't dox on this show. We doxed a lot on our old podcast. We don't dox on this show. I told my wife. That when I get like old enough, I'm just gonna buy. I'm gonna I'm gonna like up the life insurance policy, right? And then I'm gonna go on a one way. Well, I'm gonna buy a round trip to China, but I'm really only going one way. And then I'm just gonna start walking into the forest in China, you know, and like walk in as far as I can, and just start like shedding clothes, just start shedding backpack, whatever I have with me, and just. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm not coming out of there. I'm not coming out of there. No, you're, and you're, uh, animals will find me and, like, devour me eventually. Hopefully not while I'm still alive. Hopefully I die. Like, maybe I'll get sick of hiking. And then, like a gentleman would, I'll just find somewhere, like, real high up. Like, China has a lot of cool waterfalls and cliffs and stuff like that in their uh, rainforests and, and foggy uh, forest growths. I'll, I'll just throw myself off of something. And then eventually, like a panda bear or something, obviously not, not, not a panda bear, but whatever, S- some animals in China, they'll find me and they'll, they'll like eat me alive and or dead. And then they'll just like, you know, I'll be, I'll be gone. And then when, by the time they find me, uh, they, they won't know what to do. The, the Chinese, they're so small. They'll see this like big skeleton. They'll be like, ah! <gasps> giant like they'll they'll see this and they like they won't know how to react to it really they'll just like see this giant skeleton i'll probably go into like the chinese guinness book of world records <laughs> the tallest man in the world at, i'm you'll just kidding they ha- they have eight feet tall guys there you'll be a big enough skeleton in asia that maddox will do a godzilla podcast about you eventually right right i'll be one of his kaiju and i'll be like Aah! like you know but uh you know yeah yao ming i know chat i know They've got taller men than me there. Okay, I just wanted to, I just wanted a little bit of uh, grandeur. Okay, can you allow me that? Uh, <laughs> that's how I'm gonna go in a different country where they have to deal with the mess. Like my family doesn't have to like walk in and find me dead, like as a 95 year old, or who knows, dude? How long will the life expectancy be by the time we're gonna be dead? You know, it's gonna be like 120 or something stupid. Well, we're like I don't 20 want years that. apart, so we got to kind of factor that in when you're figuring it out. You're not going to get away with that on this podcast. 30 years apart, sorry. We're in the same decade now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> we are. For another few months, right? When's your birthday? Until I turn 40, yeah. <laughs> KC. That's an uh, Maddox is a gentleman then. He's a gentleman now. And he's a gentleman always. Let's get over to the court transcript. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for <laughs> at the beginning of this podcast of Russell Greer. I've highlighted your uh, your lines here. 
You're Russell, buddy. All right, hold on. I got to get back into. What was your Russell? Stretch your mouth. Voice? Stretch your mouth out a little bit. You just got to. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm okay. Russell Greer. Hi, I'm Russell Greer. There you go. Okay. You got it. Okay. Nailed it. All right. All right, here we go. Who's he talking to, by the way? The judge? The judge is talking to Russell Greer. There's there's also the prosecutor, or excuse me, the defendant, because Russell Greer is the prosecuting attorney. He's uh, representing himself, um, and he sued Taylor Swift. Her lawyer is a Utah like uh, representative for her firm or her agency or whatever. Uh, I'm sure that he thought there was a chance that Taylor Swift would be in the same courtroom as him when he filed this lawsuit and that was his intention it was just like hey like i can't i can't get through her family's gates like maybe i'll sue her and then she'll have to be like 10 feet away from me and maybe like when the bailiff isn't looking i'll just like i'll jump her real quick you know like that's what i think he thought but uh the the defendant attorney is uh is excluded from this because really it's it's only funny What's said between the judge and Russell? Because this is like a Utah small claims court judge who, uh, it turns out in Utah, uh, they assign... Oh, no, no, sorry. This is not Taylor Swift's attorney. This is Ariana Grande's attorney. It's the same attorney. Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift have the same attorney. Yeah, I remember that. (laughs) In Utah. Because none of them, neither of them live in Utah, you stupid idiot. You're just like Maddox suing in the wrong goddamn state. So, uh, the judge says, uh, Mr. Greer? Uh, yeah? Come on up here. Uh, court started 35 minutes ago. Raise your right hand and be sworn in. Do you swallow, solemnly affirm, etc., under pains of penalty of perjury? Uh, yes, I do. Take a seat at one of the tables, Mr. Greer. May I inquire, Mr. Greer, about your tardiness today? I thought it was at 2 o'clock. Why would you think that? <laughs> um, let me open my bag here. Uh, I must have misread my calendar wrong. Uh, I have, uh, if I could show you my phone. I'm not going to look at your phone. I don't really care what's in your phone. I'm looking at a small claims affidavit and summons. That was completed by you, correct? Uh, yes, sir. It states pretty clearly on August 2nd, 2017 at one thirty is when we were going to be having this hearing. We've had individuals here, witnesses here, attorneys here, a whole court staff here waiting for you. If the the case says it's going to be here at 1.30, make sure you're here at 1.30. And I I sincerely apologize. All right. I've already, uh, we've already made a ruling on your case, but I've now stricken that ruling since I was told by our kind staff that you just walked in. I've read through your affidavit and summons and, As you are aware, a motion to dismiss your case has been filed. It was so filed back on June 30th of this this year. Are you aware of that? Uh, Yeah, uh uh-huh. Okay, so no response from you. Mr. Scordis, that's the defendant, before I go into any merits of this case, why don't you discuss with the court the reasoning and tenets behind your motion to dismiss, please? And then he goes into wrongful jurisdiction and all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Mr. Greer... Would you like to respond to Mr. Scordis and the defendant's response to the court to dismiss the cases you brought? Prior to that, Mr. Greer, I'd like to address something with you. I've read through your documentation. I've gone through the defendant's documents. I've also been made aware of certain comments, social media comments, other things of that nature directed at various individuals. I'm going to give you the opportunity to explain some of those comments made very recently to me before I take any action on those. This isn't about the case. It isn't about a a uh, concert. It isn't about songs. This isn't about anything. This is about social media content, threats, electronic communications, harassment, other types of improper, inappropriate, quite illegal activity. And prior to me making commentary or acting on that, I'd like to hear what you may have to say in defense of some of the things that I've seen, some of the things I've read. Okay, before I go for Russell, boy, that was a bitch slap and a half. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And we read that last week, some of that stuff, boy. All right, so here's Russell. Uh, I, I would like to say that I have um, a lot of the stuff that I post online is sarcastic. Sarcastic? Like joking around? To be honest, I'm, I'm not sure which comments you're talking about. Do you want me to read some of them? I mean, I'm not really sure. Okay. Uh, 
Did you mean this? I promise you, there will be blood. Sarcastically. So, so that's the name of, the, of a movie. There will be blood. <laughs> so I was joking around with that, and I post uh, trolly stuff to my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand that when a stream of discussions are occurring regardless a problem uh, regarding a problem with another individual that may make it to court setting with judges and bailiffs and clerks and members of society that when someone says something to the effect of quote I promise you there will be blood unquote that that might make it uh, that that might be taken more seriously than the title of a movie might you understand that yeah, but that was never part of my, you know, I never really associated that with my court case. I say stupid stuff, and I've, I've talked to several people. Hang on, I'm reading. Uh, quote, so here's the updated docket of the case. This I promise you, there will be blood. End quote. You aren't associating this with the case at all? Russell, no. I wasn't associating it. Uh, with any threat whatsoever. I was saying something stupid. I've been trolly. I have over a thousand followers. I don't care, sir. That's <laughs> trolly. The best line. I have over a thousand followers. Which by the way makes me I don't care, care, sir. <laughs> I don't care how many followers you have. Maybe that makes your crime worse. Sir. <laughs> oh, Russell, you are a gentleman and you deserve the top spot. I, I think Maddox will probably unseat him, I hope. Oh, I don't know. Maddox is a cuck. Henry is a strong gentleman. Henry is the That's truest. true. That's true. Maddox might get downvoted to oblivion. That he would should. be even... There's, yeah. no, there's no vote that guy should ever be in that he doesn't get downvoted to oblivion. Even Kevin, the guy texting you about Biden, wouldn't support his nomination, Maddox is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe I'll get in touch with Kevin soon and... Uh, you know, more more correspondence might lead to his uh, official nomination. But for now, uh, you can go to twogoddamngentlemen.com and find uh, both King Henry VIII and uh, Maddox <laughs> and vote them one through five, gentlemen or not. Go to patreon.com backslash twogoddamngentlemen. Guys, get in on this live feed action. It's been a blast. Thank you to the people in the live feed. You've made it uh, that much more fun. Uh, thank you to those of you who are at the $5 level. Enjoy the bonus episode. I think we'll probably be uh, recording that sometime soon. If not this week, the next. Uh, we're going to start out with one bonus episode a month. And then uh, as we see the Patreon grow and the demand grow, we'll probably... Uh, probably grow to two episodes a month now for those of you in the chat that can't find it go to two goddamn gentlemen.com backslash episodes you'll be able to vote on the last two weeks and as the audio comes out for this episode uh then you'll find that that's there so uh oh man it's been uh it's been something else casey <laughs> it's been a blast but we're not done we'll be back next week as the search for the ultimate gentleman continues meeting adjourned